Why are we behind a column? That explains nothing. Why was I hiding behind a column? What? I got something on my face? What are you looking at? He looks like some kind of priest. Hello? Ignored. Hello? Hi. You gonna speak? Et tu? Emilie, tu vas? Mmm. Interesting. I don't understand. A cool star kayan paras. Inomalante candra. Ton maris. Ore tiesi ton. Oh, right. Okay. Who are you? Where am I? Where is Cortes? Why would I ask where is Cortes? We left him behind. Where am I? Sankis tue. Tonan tu ken avoj. A magican ian ton an asans. Magican? That kind of ma makes sense. Who are you? Ken esank. Maris or tona. Magic e Sorry. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting, but I don't understand any of it. Uh, not. Tu, tu fata. Se quandare. Yes, yes. Listen? Sure. Aku candy. Good. Niranton a voce. Sank al coda magic. Magic! Torante. Salhe. Naven. All tongue. <laughs> I love the dialogue options. I give up, but thanks anyway. Av orta i beginning. Parasim tin you. You have fiesa i magic i sara. I the knowledge. Aritua ya ai tue by generations e umani. Knowledge of all tongue. You're starting to make a sense. Let's listen. I don't think asking question is gonna give us anything. Now you have allowed the magic to enter your heart and the knowledge of all tongue. Ever present but dormant. That was easy. To guide your ears and your tongue. I... I understand you. You speak English? Why didn't you just tell me straight away? <laughs> no, child. I do not speak English. I speak Naven, all tongue. The common language of Arcadia. Arcadia? Wait a second. How did I get here? What is this place and who the hell are you? Oh, my manners have abandoned me yet again. I'm afraid my preoccupation with ancient texts and the company of my fellow fathers have left me unequipped with the grace of social intercourse. Meaning what? That I have been rude. My name, dear child, is Tobias Grensret, and I am the Vestrum of the Sentinel, the Order of the Balance. We are the fathers. Ah, uh, okay. I'm April. April Ryan. I take it this is your first shift, your first passage through the Divide? I have no idea what you're talking about, but I guess this is my first shift. I just... Then I will explain everything. Someone must. You are without guidance, without a mentor? Mentor? There's this guy, Cortez. He assisted me, told me about magic and truth and dreams and portals. Crazy stuff. Well, it seemed crazy at the time, although now I don't... Cortez? Ah, yes, Cortez. Very good, very good. Then come, let us proceed. Let me show you Mercuria, the grandest city of all ages. Okay, let's go. Is this Wisconsin? It doesn't seem to be. Don't think that's the premise of the game. It would be interesting. Explore Mercuria, April. See the sights, meet the people, and then, when you are ready, return to the temple. I will answer whatever questions you may have then. Okay. 
No, <laughs> not the diary again. Not the diary again. In Arcadia, is it still Saturday? Do they even have Saturdays here? And why am I not screaming and frothing and tearing my hair out when I obviously should be? When confronted with the impossible, isn't your mind supposed to just snap? Perhaps because I have so many... I've had so many vivid dreams about... Okay, now I don't even know if dreams is the right word anymore. Visions, perhaps. Or even better, premonitions. That's it. That's in keeping with the theme of this place. Magic. Oh yeah, magic. Apparently I'm simply supposed to accept without question that magic does exist. Which is impossible. But clearly not impossible enough because here there is magic. Wherever here is. I've written more on the next page. Okay, April, thanks for letting us know. Still in a phase of all this strangeness, I feel normal. Some weird inexplicable reason, and even though I've still to wrap my head around the concept, I accept this place. It feels so comfortingly familiar in a distant, hazy way. And even though I want to go home, like, right now, I'm not panicky. Not at all. Just a little bit. Oh, and I should write that name down before I forget it. Brian Westhouse. That's the last thing Cortez told me to visit Brian Westhouse whenever I wanted to go home. Let's go to the stalls. In a world without the screen, that's what passes for entertainment. And it's pretty darn good. My intuition tells me... Maps! ...that he sells maps. Good guess. Maps, I got maps. Can I interest you in a map, miss? Top notch, hand drawn in quality ink by skilled sunriders. Ain't no better in all the Northlands. How much are your maps? Do you sell maps for the sea? Mind if I ask you a couple of questions? No maps for me today, thanks. How would I be even able to um, buy something in this place? How much are your maps? Uh, that depends, miss. I uh, got a very nice one here of the border mountains for only six Arons, fresh Arons? from the quill of a sunrider. Maps, get your maps here. What's Aaron? Do you sell maps of the city? I don't have those. Can't help you sure. there, miss. The Guild of Tourism has monopoly on city maps. I can tell you're not from around here, or you know that. Got tons of maps of all the Northlands, though, from the city of Tyron to the Bay of Fire. Maps! Mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Yes, maps! Do you know Vest from Tobias? How do you get along with your neighbour? Or you know about Stark? What's Arcadia like? Do you know Vest from Tobias? Everyone knows Vestrum Tobias, girl. He's been an important part of this city for as long as I can remember. What can you tell me about him? The Vestrum is an honorable man, but a conservative one. And I don't know if he still has the best interests of the people at heart. Sometimes I think he worries too much about custom. The Sentinel have been our so-called protectors and keepers of the balance for so long we don't even think of it anymore. But now that the Vanguard are introducing a new way of thinking, new philosophies, I'm afraid the Sentinel will find their power diminish before too long. Their resistance to change will be their downfall. Mark my words, their downfall for certain. And Tobias, honorable man that he is, will be remembered as the captain who went down with his ship. What's Arcadia like? What can I say about a whole world, girl? It's a beautiful place for sure, but we're stuck in the past. We don't look ahead, not like our cousins in Stark. 
magic is all well and good, but it won't bring our world into the modern age, and Arcadia is untamed. It's wild and unpredictable. Good for the map business, sure, but not so good for productivity and expansion. No, some people may consider our world a paradise. The Sentinel, for one, they'd prefer to keep it just the way it is. Me, I'd like to see some changes, and fast. Thanks for your help. Maps! Where can I find the Guild of Tourism? They're closed for the holidays. Oh, great. Sure, that makes sense. No maps for me. Fair enough, miss, but don't expect me to come running to your aid if you ever get lost in Riverwood. Without my maps, you'll probably end up a mole's dinner or worse. Maps! Worse? <laughs> okay. So let's go here. Cups and luck. That's a particularly sleazy looking boy. merchant. I wonder what he's selling. Want to test your skill and perception with a game of cups? There are prizes to be won! <laughs> okay. Uh, what can what I win? What can I win? Well, there's coin, of course. Double your bet or choose from a wide variety of exotic prizes. Like this antique Domari canter from Guienne. A superb replica of Mount Tyrone, cast in pure solid iron. A magic walnut from the once magic glorious walnut. island kingdom of Anciel. A magic walnut? What does and it do? Some unique bird. A bird! Get me out of here! <laughs> Keep your beak shut, you scraggly piece of. <clears throat> and he talks! Great for feasts and for the amusement of infants. He's our top prize, a real keeper. We don't have any money, but... How do I play? You put your coin down on the table. I put a cup on top of it and shuffled it around with the other two cups. And all you have to do is guess which one hides your coin. And remember, no magic used, and none allowed. This amulet right here will light up if you use magic. Then you'll be banned. For life! Sorry, but I'm broke. May the balance bring coin to your pocket, young lady, so that you may return to me and waste... Uh, invest <laughs> it in a game of cups. I guess. All right. Do we have any money? No, we don't. Mate... Mm? Does he want the ring? No. It was worth trying, I guess. I don't think the card would work. Mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Time is money, so make it quick. Jesus Christ, all right, mate. What right. do you know about Vestrum Tobias? Vestrum Tobias, eh? The high priest of the Muggin? Sentinel himself. Did you know they Muggin? call themselves the Fathers? It's a joke. I do know When that, was the actually. last time they did anything for us, the people? No. They are only interested in sticking seem with like their a fun lad. customs and keeping their secrets under lock. I'm a positive more person. More inclined to listen to these new people, the Vanguard. Their ideas appeal to me. They may be radical, but what no, radical. do for a change? Only thing I don't wholly approve of is their alliance with the tyrant. Filthy, dangerous people. But the Vanguard seem to have them under control, so I'm not right. too worried. I oh, that sounds great, actually. City, do you know anything about Stark? Not much. I'm not too sure if I even believe in the place. I mean, you hear the stories and you read the books. Uh, well, I don't, but some do. A place where there's no magic, only science? Hmm. Sounds like a bloody paradise, doesn't it? I mean, with my, um... <clears throat> Skills? I could make a killing in a place like that. What's Arcadia like? What a queer question that is. What's the world like? It's big for one, and too expensive. And they should ban Dalmari women from gambling because I swear they have a second sight. How do you get along with your neighbor? The maps merchant? We've faced each other for six years now, every single day, and he never speaks a word to me except to insult me. Well, Nose high in the well, sky. Calls me a charlatan, as well, if he's the guardian himself. You know good oversized bag of wind? Thanks. 
oversized no. bag of wind. How about a game of cups? I need to write that down. <laughs> All right. Thanks, but no thanks. I don't have any money. Suit yourself. But that attitude will never bring coin to well, your pocket. Well, I don't have any coin in my pocket. Thanks. It's a talking bird. It's the traditional game of cups in which you stand no chance of ever winning. The fun part is seeing just how much you can possibly lose in one go. I like my outfit. It's inexpensive. Cool. The whole fountain's been carved in one piece from a granite-like material. All right. Sea gates. Stout guardians of the city. Wooden but stout. And that blue fire is way cool. This guy's selling musical instruments. Most of these I don't even recognize. But he's got a drum in there and what looks like half a guitar and a couple of dried rabbit carcasses. But does he have a flute? Does he have a flute? He's selling musical instruments. I'm not in the market for an instrument at this particular moment. Still, good to know where to get one in case of a musical emergency. This lady's selling fresh fish. I've never seen fish like this before. But if it's wet and has fins, fish it is. The walls look ancient. Mercury must be at least as old as anything back in the real, uh, in my world. He's selling a variety of fresh shellfish and other, uh, delicacies. Trying my best not to miss anything. But God, this is so, so nostalgic to me. Can we talk to anyone? Perhaps? Blue fire. It's either propane or magic. I'm guessing the latter. It's a lighthouse, much like the ones we have at home, except this one, of course, burns a blue fire. Small pier. And a ship. Is that it? Let's go to the pier. Oh, hello. Old sailor. The old man and the, uh, ocean? Yeah, that's how Looks it went. Looks like a lifetime at sea has left his tracks on him. Better a lifetime at sea than a day in a dress and a brazier. Bruh. That was uncalled for. Hello, old man. I got me no treasure and I got me no map of no buried treasure. I just be an old sailor with no ship, so leave us be. <laughs> what a vibe. What a vibe. What are you doing? Mending nets, of course. What'd it look like I'd be doing? I'm not well versed in maritime customs. Mar what? Ah, yes, mean sea life, dear not. Ah, the smell of the salty sea, the lapping of waves on your ship, the spray of cold water on your face, plump maidens in every part. I, I tell yous, I be having stories about the sea. Cad, share some of your maritime stories with me. What have got you in that chest? Care to share some of your maritime stories with me? Mar what? <laughs> ah, tales of the sea, right? Sure, sweetie, I be happy to. Now, what stories be I wanted to hear then? Any tale of your ex exciting adventures would do. Any wow. tale of your exciting adventures will do. I I be having plenty of tales to tell. There be the tale of me adventures in the Bakshivan Empire, if you'd be interested. It'll be a tale of grand romance. Just up your alley, be sure of it. Oh, okay. Sure. <laughs> sure, that sounds like a fine story. Aye. 
It'd be near on fifty years ago that I was a mate on a sturdy old lady called the Three-Legged Whore. The what? What do I be saying? She was called the Thrifty Horse, she was. Aye, that be her name. The Whistle What's It. Uh, you don't remember the ship's name, do you? Ah, uh, anyways. Anyways. I'd be a young mate, then. And we be anchored in Mount Herba, the grand western port of the once glorious Bakshivan Empire. I be having ship leave until the following evening, and it be me first visit to that exotic and dangerous port. So I sits out to have a look around. Now, bear in mind that Mount Herba be ruled by a mock. Like all large Bakshivan cities. In principle, the mock be having to report to and pay half of all taxes to the Emperor in Port Altaban. But with the Bakshivan Empire having all but crumbled into pieces, the provinces do be having the power to do pretty much as they be wanting. Arr. And so I sets out on me own that day to explore the city. Now, bear in mind that all the cities of the Southland... And that be me <laughs> adventures in the once glorious empire. How I be chased by the mock <laughs> oh, the animation of And how I be the first man to walk asleep. across the desert of Shangagriel, the oh, wastelands. And how I be getting this awful rash on? That was lovely. Arr, girl, a rash? You do not be sleeping, do you? Rash on what? <laughs> you what? <laughs> this what? game. What? 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 Sleeping? N no. No, <laughs> no. 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 Just concentrating. Arr. Uh, arr. Good story, though. Solid. Solid material. Ever considered doing a book? I. But the agents in Marcuria be bloodthirsty vampires with no thought but to milk your life's blood. To be like that. Oh. So they take an outrageous commission then? No. They actually be bloodthirsty vampires <laughs> with a penchant for biting your neck when you ain't be looking. Huh. I love this game. I love this game. I I love this game. <laughs> I'd love to hear some more maritime stories we've got in that chest. What have you got in that chest? <laughs> what chest? The one, the you're, one sitting you're sitting on. on. Oh, that be no chest, girl. That be me stool. Okay. I me stool carved into the uncanny likeness of a chest. You're lying. No priceless treasure, that be for sure. Nothing, nothing at all. It be empty. Sure. Yeah, sure. I do believe you. <laughs> no, really. What's in the chest? Oh, live sneaks. Aye, sneaks that'll bite your face off before you have time to jump. Better leave them be, then. I'm still curious about that chest. Right, right. I be telling you, curse the balance, girl. You never give up, do you? No, I don't. I be having no real treasure in here, like I told ye. But it be where I keep me personal articles, and things I be picking up now and then on me travels. Personal? Me bed, it's where I be keeping me bed before I be losing him. I be a stupid, stupid old man, he be my best friend. I ain't nobody else around to talk to, you see, on account of him being a talking bird. What happened to your talking bird? I be... He cheated out of him. Aye, <gasps> that cups handler on the marketplace be cheating me in a full game of cups, and I be having to give me bird up to try to oh. win me money back. No. And what happened? He be taking me bird when I be choosing the wrong cup. Aye, my best friend taken from me. Cursed to be the balance. I be all lonesome now. The worst part is that me bird is now a prize to be won. A prize in a cups game. Beat the handler thrice and you win a prize of your choice, me poor bird. What's your bird's name? Bird. Oh. Bird. <laughs> bird. Oh, I'm sad now. I'm so sad I'd now. I better get going. 
Ah, you young'uns all be always running round. Everything be so important. He's been having no time to sit down and take a breath. So go. I already you know, slept. You're wasting your time here with me. I al I... <laughs> I... Okay. I was literally... I, I was wouldn't literally feel too comfortable about asleep. sailing anywhere in that. It's like a Hearing toy boat for children. Talk about about his uh, his maritime stories, but all right. We don't have any time to we don't have any time to sit down. Sure, it's a lighthouse. Oh, hello. Judging Sailor. by his ungainly stance, I'd say he's a mariner pining for the sea. Ahoy there, matey. Pardon. <laughs> Isn't that how you sailors greet each other? Mm, that was no. Awful. No. W what do you say then? Usually, hello. And if it's sunny, nice day for it. We might even try a how are you today then, if we're feeling adventurous. But never, ever, ahoy. This is valuable information. Aye, matey, that it be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why aren't you out at sea? Why aren't you out at sea? Do you see the sail on that barge over there? Yes. Is it flapping? What? Is it flapping? <laughs> Is the sail flapping in the wind? Um, no. And why is that then? Because, because <laughs> it's not She's windy? thinking intensively. Exactly. Well, can't you just use oars or something? Oars. Oh, what an excellent idea. Now, why didn't <clears throat> we think of that? Of course, oars. By Jaws' stunted left arm, that's it. Why have we been moored to the dock for a month <laughs> with our merchandise dropping in value when we could have just rowed our way to Guillen? Are you being sarcastic? Sarcastic? Me? What in Jarl's name makes you think that? How long's it been since the last wind? Near a month. Ever since that accursed alchemist put some kind of spell on the wind. The Mojal be cursed if I know why. But it's a bloody catastrophe. I've sent some good people of mine up north to deal with him, but not one has returned. Now the a Reed High Council speak of sending an entire army platoon to sort him out. But I'm afraid that just might piss him off. Who's this alchemist who cast a spell on the wind? I believe his name is Clax. Roper Clax. Lives in a bloody rock somewhere up north beyond Riverwood. Thanks for the chat. Aye. Well, this guy needs to go swimming. We found something out. Let's go back. Maybe to the chapel and talk with Tobias again. Okay, we still don't have any monies. So let's try to talk to Tobias again and see where this takes us. Excuse me, Western Tobias? Tobias, just call me Tobias, please. I require no ceremony from a distinguished guest such as yourself. Oh, thank Did you. Did you enjoy the sights? I don't know. I'm overwhelmed. Walking around out there, seeing with my own two eyes things that can't possibly exist. I kept thinking, it's all a dream. I'll wake up at any moment now and everything will return to normal. But then I realized, I'm still here. It's real. I can touch it. I can smell it. And you know what? It doesn't make sense. Nothing makes sense here. Magic, alien creatures, parallel worlds. I don't believe in those things. I don't believe in fairy tales. In your world, in Stark, there is no room for magic. That is and always has been the curse of science, the fallibility of logic and order. But then, magic has its downsides too. It's unpredictable. It invites chaos. It puts the balance in peril in a way that science alone never could. I keep hearing about the balance and about Stark and Arcadia and... 
This is probably going to sound strange to you, but I'm clueless. I have no idea what this place is, or what I'm doing here, or... All I know is that something strange is happening in... In my world, I guess. I had dreams, and the dreams felt so real, and then things started happening in real life, too. Things that shouldn't... Couldn't happen, and I... I think I will begin at the very beginning. I believe that is why you were sent here. To learn, to understand, to see for yourself. Like you said, you cannot believe in this place. Well, you will. After you have learned the truth, you will. Come with me, and I will tell you the story of Earth as your books never have. And when your eyes and ears are open to the truth, perhaps your mind will follow. We can only hope. Come. This is the true story of the balance. As observed by the Sentinel, the order of the balance, the fathers. The Sentinel Minstrum committed this story to the pages of the scriptures and to these temple walls thousands of years ago, so that coming generations could learn and understand their past and their future. The wall paintings we are looking at became known as the murals of the balance. And it is through these images that I will recount our common history to you, April Ryan. The story begins and ends here, with this mural. Ages ago and in ages to come, the Earth was one, and magic and science existed side by side in nature and in all people. There was balance, and there was harmony. You're saying there was just one world then? One world, one Earth. Magic and science in balance with each other, within each and every living creature. The power to make the stars dance and to create life itself was within our grasp. But then, humankind began to exploit this divine power of two, and they saw fit to use it for their own selfish purposes. The As balance they of the do. cosmos was in peril. As they always do. Unless something was done, unless man was humbled and learned to fear the power he wrought over cosmos, the twilight of chaos would fall upon Earth. It had happened before, in distant times and on distant worlds, and it would happen again. And every man, woman, and child of every people and every race would be devoured by the coming apocalypse. We were given a visitation then. The drag kin having lived among us for untold generations, rose to offer their guidance and assistance in preserving the balance on our world. The Drag? I think I've heard that name before. Drykin, Draken, Dragons, whichever name they go by, they remain the eternal servants and custodians of the balance. There were four of them here on Earth. And of the four, one who would found the order of the balance, the Sentinel. The first Minstrum were instructed that magic and science would have to be separated before the balance collapsed and brought untold disaster. Earth would have to be split in two equal parts, Arcadia and Stark. Magic and science chaos and order. The first sentinel were counted 13, six scientists, six magicians, and one who was between, the drag kin, our mentor, our custodian, our learned guide. Both magic and science were needed to perform this most difficult of tasks, to split a world in two, to create two worlds from one. Wasn't the use of that kind of power dangerous to the balance? Yes, and so for this purpose, they built a tower to channel their powers and focus them on the divide that they would create. The kin had brought a disc with them, a disc forged in the fire of their world. Placed at the base of the tower and the epicenter of the divide, the disc and the tower would become one, a conduit for the flow of magic and science. At the appointed hour, the 13 came to the tower and with them a woman whose destiny was decided by the purpose to which she had been born. She would be the first guardian, the human protector of the balance, 
who would stay in the tower for a thousand years to watch over the two worlds and to ensure that the flows of magic and science were always equal. A thousand years. And so the ritual began. That's One some, world that's was to become two, work. separated by the balance, and each world visible to the other only by way of dreams. Who was ushered into which world was not an arbitrary choice, nor one taken lightly. Hmm. For the magical creatures, the choice was simple. They had to go to Arcadia. Their kind would not survive in Stark. But for others, families were torn apart, lovers separated and friends lost for all eternity. Encircled by the Twelve and the One, and the One who would be Guardian, the disk at the base of the tower began to spin faster and faster as more and more power flowed through it until it was a blur. Darkness enveloped the tower, but the disk glowed brighter and brighter. Reality turned, and in one moment, a new reality had been created and two new worlds born. In the tower there was silence. The original disk had disappeared, and in its place, was a smaller counterpart, a similar yet different disk. Around and outside the tower, the world looked different. They were now between Stark and Arcadia, between reality and dream. This was the realm of the balance and of the Guardian, and it would be her home for the next 1,000 years. The one who was kin picked up the disk and said, this disk is a counterpart to the original disk which has now become this realm, and the key to which has been split and divided in four. The key is the disk, and the disk is this realm. This mystified the Twelve, and the one who was kin continued. Know only this. The Guardian's realm cannot be broken unless the disk is broken, but nor can it be repaired without the disk being repaired. The four pieces that is the key will be given to the six of you who are to be taken to Arcadia for safekeeping. Yet the key will never be complete, he went on. Without the precious stones that adorn each piece, I will keep one, and my fellow kin, the three others. Should the day come when this realm must be repaired, or the worlds reunited, and that day will come, you will assemble the disk and the kin will come together one last time. With that, six of the thirteen went to Arcadia, and six to Stark, and the one who would be guardian ascended to the throne. Witness the mural, where her dreams and hopes, her very soul, were locked away in the disk. In service of the balance, these traits were nothing but barriers. Through new eyes, the imbalance between the worlds was as clear as the stars themselves to the Guardian, and with one thought, she channeled chaos from Arcadia and logic from Stark into the disk and redistributed the power wherever it was needed. A new era had begun, the era of the Guardian. After they left the tower, two of the Drakkin went to Stark, the other two to Arcadia. The six who came to each world started what is now known as the Sentinel, the Order of the Balance. But while in Arcadia the Sentinel thrived, in Stark they did not. In Stark the memories of magic and the balance could not survive in the face of the new reality of natural laws of logic and of science. And soon, very soon, Arcadia became nothing more than legend, a myth tales of fairies to recount to impressionable children and stories to frighten and entertain around a fire. <laughs> and while dreams still brought sights and sounds of Arcadia to those asleep in Stark, they were discounted as mere dreams and nothing more. So that's it? We forgot about our past and about Arcadia? And that's the way things are? Then what's wrong with that? And why does magic from Arcadia seem to have begun leaking through to Stark? That is another long story. But I can tell that you are tired of stories, and so I shall be brief. As I told you, while in Arcadia, the Sentinel grew in numbers and in strength. In Stark, while 
Flourishing for a brief time, they were soon diminished and powerless. Some of the Stark Sentinel did not take kindly to this, and they berated the Arcadian Sentinel for their politics and teachings. The Stark Sentinel wanted people to work towards reunification, while their brothers did not. So the inevitable soon came to pass, and the Stark Sentinel parted ways with their Arcadian brothers and named themselves the Vanguard. Oh, that's and the Vanguard. And while at first their philosophy was not so different from ours, over the years it changed radically. The Vanguard wanted the divide torn down, the worlds reunited, and the return to what they called the Glorious Ages, when humankind could control the forces of cosmos. But first they needed their own servant in charge of the balance, their own guardian. Now, every 1,000 years, a new guardian took the place of the old one, because no one can be separated from their souls for any longer than a 1,000 years. Every 1,000 years, a new guardian was born. The balance provided the seed from which a new fruit grew. But now, it has been 200 years since the previous guardian, the 12th guardian, was to be replaced. Every new child born to the balance has been taken away by the vanguard to be studied in an attempt to control them. In every instance so far, they have failed. But the 12th guardian could wait no longer. Only a short time ago, the disc in the tower shattered and the guardian left his throne. The balance is now untended and we have yet to find a new guardian. Unless we do so, the vanguard may get their chance. And they may be able to place their own puppet on the throne to rule the balance according to their principles. And this we cannot allow. It will mean the end of Stark and Arcadia and the dawn of an era of chaos. Now do you see? I understand the history. I can even accept it. But I don't understand why I'm here and what Cortez wants with me. I wonder... Balance is in peril, April. The Guardian has abandoned his tower. He has disappeared. And there is no one to take his place. He must be reinstated to protect the Balance until a new Guardian may be found. And what can I do? I'm nobody. I've just been having a lot of bad dreams. You are a strong shifter. I have not seen your like in my lifetime. A shifter? Someone capable of opening doors between worlds. A shift. A portal between the realms of Stark and Arcadia. Are you kidding? I didn't do anything. Cortez was the one who opened the... shift? And he just waved his hands around in the air. I don't think I'd be capable of opening a portal even if I had a magic wand. Only a shifter's own power can allow her to travel. No one else can do this for her. Cortez only channeled your power to aid you. He would not be able to step through the shift himself. Even if that's true, I don't have any control over my... talent. Not yet. But in time you will. How else do you intend to travel back to your world? God, I hadn't even thought about that yet. Can't you help me? I'm afraid not. Even if I could shift, I would not be able to channel through you like Cortez did. So, I'm on my own? If you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them. But aside from that... Yes. Yes, <laughs> you are. That's so not cool. <laughs> No, it has been unseasonably warm. <laughs> if you don't mind, I will return to my studies now. Thank you for listening to an old man and his long stories. N no, thank you. It's starting to make a little bit of sense now. That is good news. Come see me again if you have any more questions. Climate change vibes? I've just been taught the story of the balance by Vestrum Tobias and I figured I should try to write this down while I still remember bits and pieces of it. 
talk about cryptic history. Tobias lost me somewhere around 12 and 1. Like, excuse me? What? I think I got the gist of it. There are two worlds. One is Stark, the world of science, what I call Earth. And then there's Arcadia, the world of magic, what people here call Earth. Two Earths then, which gets a little confusing, but not half as confusing as what came after. A long, long time ago, there was just one Earth, and this Earth had both magic and science, but mankind has always had a habit of screwing things up, and this is what they did on the original Earth. They got too powerful, learned how to move stars and be gods by combining the powers of magic and science. Alien race called the Drakkin decided to interfere to prevent mankind from destroying their own world. One of the so-called kin founded this religious movement called the Sentinel, or the Fathers, who are self-appointed watchers over the balance between magic and science. The Sentinel were instrumental in dividing the Earth in to two dimensions, Stark and Arcadia, science and magic. They also put a woman in charge of controlling and channeling the balance between the two worlds. A guardian of the balance who lives in a tower in a sort of in-between realm and who's replaced every 1,000 years by a new guardian. So then life goes on, like for a thousand years, until the sentinel starts squabbling internally and the sentinel priests in Stark decide to break with their Arcadian friends and found this new cult, or whatever, called the Vanguard. The Vanguard want the worlds reunited and they plan to do this by controlling the Guardian himself or herself. This is what they've been doing for a few hundred years now, destroying potential Guardians by performing experiments on them. Or something. My hand is starting to cramp up. I'm amazed I don't even remember half of this. Anyways, the current Guardian couldn't stay any longer and he left his tower in the middle of nowhere and now the balance is in danger. Apparently, Chaos can really do some serious damage to both Stark and Arcadia, which does remind me of my uh, dream. I'm not sure that's the right word anymore. With the black chaos thingy, the vortex that attacks me, that's probably a sign of what's going to happen if somebody doesn't do something to save the balance. And I'm sensing this coming on because that's how it always goes in these things, that that somebody is me. Because apparently I'm a strong shifter. Somebody has to find the Guardian, get him back in the tower to save the balance, and then do something about the Vanguard, get them to see that they're screwing with things they shouldn't be screwing with. Hey, easy. I do that kind of stuff before breakfast. What do you know about Cortez? Your mentor? What has he told you about himself? Not much. Nothing, in fact. He's a complete mystery to me. To learn something about someone, the best way to go about it is to ask them yourself. There is nothing I can Here do you to go. enlighten you. But who is he? He is who he is. What he is. If he has not told you himself, then perhaps he does not wish you to know. It would be improper for fair. me to divulge his secrets. You're as That's bad fair. as he is. No offense. It's just frustrating. I understand. The next time you see him, tell him what you have told me. Maybe he will tell you the truth. Maybe he will not. It is his choice to make. Very true. <laughs> Do you know a man named Brian Westhouse? Westhouse? That old goat? Yes, unfortunately. What would you with him? I need to find him. I do not know where he lives. I hear somewhere on the outskirts of the city by the sea, but I cannot tell you any more than that. Who'd know about Westhouse? His whereabouts? I do not understand what you would with him. He is rude, uncultured, and ignorant. Cortez told me to look him up. Well... I do not know where he lives or frequents, but someone at the market may. He hmm. trades merchandise there, and I think he collects maps of the Northlands. Hmm. That's interesting, okay. Uh, um. I will try my best to answer any question you may have, April. Oh, it's history of Arcadia, or what's Mercuria like? What's Mercuria like? I have lived in this city all my life, and still it amazes me what a diverse, exciting, and wonderful place it is. Many have called Marcuria the Jewel of the Northlands, and they are right. But it is a diamond in the rough. A city this size can never be flawless. There are always shadows, and people who hide in them. Lately the shadows have grown and darkened, and I fear for the future. But Marcuria is still a wonderful place to live. What are the Northlands? 
The Northlands is a collective term for all the lands north of the Great Sea and south of the border mountains including Irid, Tyran, and Khorasan. Before, however, the word Northlands was used to describe this entire continent, including the territories north of the mountains and the icy wastes beyond that. Some still prefer the latter interpretation of the name. And to the people of the Southlands, anyone hailing from north of the Great Sea is a Northlander regardless. Tell me a little about Irid. Irid means both unification and assembly in Haitang, and many still call Irid the unified country, even though it is an age and a half since the lands of the north joined together in alliance. Irid stretches from the plains of Nedra in the north to the Great Sea in the south, and from the territories of Tyran in the west to the thick woodlands in the east. It is populated by humans and Dolmare, Tyran and a number of other races. It is even said that a tribe of Venar have a ring of trees in Riverwood, though I am not sure that is anything but a myth. Thanks for the information. I think I must take I'm glad it. I could assist you. Other than the one I might just sleep for those thousand years, which is fair. <laughs> Don't know if that would work as a guardian, but um, I gotta admit that the premise and the plot of this game is good. I do agree. I don't know what I was expecting diving back into it. I already said it a thousand times, but I didn't remember much. Yeah, it's in terms of story, it does still hold up pretty nicely. So that's. I'll see you later. That's surprising. You will. In a nice way. If you say so, then it must be true. You will. Let's try the map seller again, maybe. Still don't have any monies to try and trade. In the cup game. Maps! I'm looking for Brian Westhouse. Briar West of House? It's not on any of my maps, and I've never heard of it. Maps! It's a man, not a place, Mr. Brian Westhouse. I would most certainly remember a name as queer as that, and I don't. Get your maps while they're fresh. Mind if I ask you a couple of questions? That doesn't make yes, sense. Yes, maps! How do you get along with your neighbors? The cup's handler? Stay away from him, miss. He takes great joy in robbing people's purses. You can't beat him, not without magic. And he doesn't allow magic at his table. How would he know if I did use magic? Oh, he's got one of those blasted talismans. They're always digging up magical artifacts in Chagagriel, and they sell them to dogs like him for a silver coin or two. Get a proper job, you son of a mole! Okay. What do you know about Stark? Land of wonders, strange customs, and machinery. Ah, to be in Stark. I like his eyebrows. I'd give my right <laughs> leg. He's moving well, them a lot. perhaps not my right leg as such. You really need two sturdy legs to stand on in this business, or you'll find yourself... Um, uh, yes, uh, a grand place indeed, free of this blasted, chaotic, unpredictable magic does no good to anyone. Now, machines built by man, controlled by man, in servitude of man, that's the future, isn't it? Yes, the Vanguard may be a little unorthodox in their methods and teachings, but they're right about one thing. Stark and Arcadia belong together, not apart. Thanks for your help. Maps! Bye. Maps! How about a game of cups today? Uh, mm, I don't... What if I tell him, okay, let's go, and I don't have any money? Okay, let's go. Just place your bet <clears throat> investment, investment on the table and the game will begin. What if I lose my ring? Can I can I use that? Probably not. I can. Okay, it didn't work before. Is that gold? Only valid Arcadian coin in iron and other precious metals allowed at my table, young lady. Take your worthless gold elsewhere. Worthless gold. Gold? Worthless? Now I have heard everything. I can't play with that. Well that's that's unfortunate. What do you want then? Some plastic? <laughs> do you want some plastic? No? Shit. How about a game of cups today? I'm gonna try everything. I'm gonna give him sweets. What can I do here? Do you want do you want some sticky sticky candy? That doesn't even work. And I'm not I'm not really surprised. The plastic, maybe? No? Well. Wow. Nothing. 
Do you want my card with all of my money? That doesn't work here. Yeah, no. Let's... Yeah, I don't know. Let's go to the sea again. What's that? What the hell kind of animal is that? Beast and the rider. I'm trying to figure out whether I missed something at the temple, maybe. So I'm gonna back I'm gonna go back there. Let's go to the back and see if I've if if every if anything is uh to the left. So we've been there. Okay, well then we didn't miss anything. Good to know. I feel like someone's I feel like someone's staring at me. Point. And they go with the general decor of the place. Nothing here either. Should I ask him about getting back my place? I don't Excuse think I me. did. Let's try that. How am I supposed How to get am back? I supposed to get back to Stark? It might be within me, but it doesn't look like it's coming out anytime soon. I wish I could help you, but I cannot. You must find the path on your own. Great. All right. I'll thanks. see you later. Okay. Uh. Let's, let's get back here, I guess. I don't need an instrument theoretically yet. Well, good to let's, know where to get one. Maybe in let's case go of, back uh, to musical the old sailor. Oh, again, old man. Eh. Eh. It be you. Yes. <laughs> He's stretching. Forgot about the pipe. I'd love to hear some more maritime stories. Sure, sweetie, I'd be happy to. Are we, are we going what to... What story you'd be wanting are to we, hear Are we going now? to fall asleep again? Any tale of your exciting adventures will do. You want more? Damn be me wooden left ankle. I'd be having a great old tale to tell yous about how I'd be coming to have me wooden pecker. It all began... You know what? <laughs> On second thought, forget about it. Okay. Ah. I don't know what to say. I'm not willing to listen to any any more of his stories actually. Thank you. He already run out of dialogue options and this guy here on the left is waiting for some coins. I didn't run out of options with the temple guy. Apparently that's what you're supposed to do. You just have to cover every single bit of dialogue that's presented to you. <laughs> Logic. Excuse let's, me. Let's try that again. We did ask him about West House. Can I ask you some more questions about Arcadia? Why, certainly. Mercurio, we already... We already asked him about that. What's the history of Arcadia? There is so much I do not know where to begin. In truth, it would be wiser to ask someone else, unless you wish to know about the Fathers, the Balance, or Mudhoppers. My secret passion. I study mud them. Mudhoppers? They are a most fascinating species. Most fascinating indeed. But I am not practically versed in the intricacies of history, I am sorry to say. What else can you tell me about Mercuria? Mercuria is the capital of Irede, the unified country, and we are located on the southern coast of the Northlands, halfway between Tyran and Khorasan. Between the Snapjaw and the Gaint Beast, some might call it. Between the embers and the fire. Yet democracy and peace have reigned for thousands of years now, and although relations may at times be strained with our Tyran neighbors, the High Council are masters of diplomacy. Hmm. And Lord Igvan Delen is a firm and just chief counselor of the Iredan flag. Thanks for the information. It I'm just, glad I could assist it you. It just blows my mind. The law of this game. I do remember being impressed by it when I first played it, but I, again, I was just a, just a wee child. And it still impresses me now. Who did you say, did I, you should say I should see about Westhouse? The that we already know. That the market may know. 
There is one thing I must tell you, however. Few would know Westhouse by his real name. He is known mm. as the Rolling Man because of his strange. Why wouldn't you tell me that before? <laughs> the most dreadful and dangerous contraption. We had this saw. conversation already. A bicycle? Perhaps. It has a grotesque appearance, much like the Westhouse himself. Okay. okay. I'll see you later. That's it covered then. You keep then. telling me so, and I do believe you. <laughs> right. Let's hope we don't see him again this time around. Let's get back to the stores. And let's talk about Brian Westhouse again. Maps! Maps! Can you tell me where the rolling man lives can you tell me where the rolling man lives maybe maybe not why because i need to find him sorry guild rules uh, i'm not allowed to divulge any personal information about my customers maps i really need to know where the rolling man lives sorry can't do please pretty please Oh my god. No, 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 young lady. Don't give me that doe-eyed look. Don't. Ah, blasted be the balance. You're giving me that doe-eyed look, aren't you? I still can't tell you, though. I got maps. Okay. Please tell me where the rolling man lives. I'm not giving no, up. I can't do, miss. Uh, I can't divulge personal information about my customers. You're annoying, my man. Who are you? You're late again! And you know what else? You're fired! Give me back the delivery list and get your sorry blue skin elsewhere! Aren't you just a pleasure? Hired hell. Bah! Never hire a Dolmari to do a human job. What are you going to do now without a delivery boy? What are you going to do now without a delivery boy? Hire a new one, of course. Uh, blasted be the balance. That means I'll have to pay the damn fee to the Guild of Merchants. Damnation! Maybe I could help you out. You? How? I'm quick, honest, and reliable. And I've got a lot of experience in the service industry. Hmm. Perhaps a female errand boy it could work. If the Guild of Merchants don't find out... I won't tell them if you don't. Mind the pay is not much, only a single errand per delivery, plus whatever tip the customer may see fit to give you. That would be enough to play the game with his neighbor. I'll take the job, if you want me. Agreed. Maybe you'll even bring in some new business. Here's the delivery list for today and your first map. It's oh, for the good. Captain of the White Dragon. We already Never know Bay, him. I think his name is. You'll find him in the harbor. We already know him. Okay. Oh, Easy money. Remember to have the customer sign the delivery list. The guild are sticklers for protocol. No signature. No money. No new jobs. All right. Bye now. I've got it. Maps. Fresh, maps. detailed, life-saving maps. Let's go. Let's get the money. Is that him? How are that's you not today, the captain. Then? Right, that's like just a sailor. Care. Is this the white dragon? That's what the big white letters on the prow spell out. What do you think? I'm looking for the captain. Is he around? That's gonna be him. Well, I have a delivery for him. A map from be the map merchant at the temple market. Hi. I be Captain Horatio Nebavea, the white dragon. Fastest vessel there ever was. Of course. Hand the map over, girl. With Jarl's blessing, the wind will return soon, and I can leave this accursed harbor for sunnier shores. Okay, there you go. Thank you. There's an errand for your trouble. Sign this, please. Sign this, please. <laughs> what is it? I need your signature to confirm that you've received All the right. map. Map? What map? <laughs> The okay. one I just gave you. Oh, that one. Sorry, I never put my signature on a piece of paper. Excuse me? <laughs> Sign it or I'll kill you. Why not? Brings bad luck to give a piece of yourself in that manner. 
A signature has untold powers. It's part of your soul. I can't sign away my Mate, soul. You can't be serious. Well, who told you that signing a slip of paper is bad for your soul? Who told you that signing a slip of paper is bad for your soul? I'm from Guyenne, and we're a <laughs> spiritual people. Our souls are in balance with our bodies, and the great Mojal has taught us not to endanger this balance. Um. Signing right. my name, giving a piece of myself in that manner, breeds corruption and imbalance within. And it pisses the Mojal off no end. Oh, well then. And that's why you choose to make my life difficult? Hey, blame organized religion. <laughs> Always. Always. You can't write, can you? Pardon? That? Uh, so what? So what if I can't <laughs> write? So what if I was born at sea and never spent more than a month ashore ever since? I still won't sign your accursed paper by Jal. I love this game. Look, all you have to do is sign an X next to your name on the list. You can't trick the great Mojal. The Mojal's untrickable. That's not trickery. It's legally binding. I said no. Is there anything I can do to get you to sign? No. Well, yes. But no. But no. Look, Captain, I'm desperate here. I really, really need some kind of signature. Well, there's always music. Huh? What's music got to do with you signing my list? Nothing, but it distracts the mojo. What are you talking about? Why would you need to distract the... the... Mojal? I can't sign when there's a chance the Mojal is watching. Music distracts the Mojal. Ergo, I can sign. But doesn't that mean the Mojal is always distracted? I mean, there's always music somewhere in the world. The Mojal has an eye and an ear for every acolyte. And straying from the path can bring great wrath upon us. Granted, I know very little of the Mojal. But seriously, maybe you should look into alternative religions? The flute! Blasphemy! <laughs> Besides, the I only have to visit the temple once every two years, and the membership fees are quite reasonable. Oh, that sounds nice. So, if I play some music, you'll sign? Aye. I'll give you that much. I'll be back. I will. I don't doubt it for a second. Give me my flute. <laughs> if it's actually going to be a flute, I'm going to lose it. What's your, um, most affordable instrument? That's cute. The flute, right? And how much for the flute? I'm guessing that's one Aaron. He's selling the flute for one Aaron, I think. Okay. Give me the monies. I'll have the flute. That's one Aaron, isn't it? Can't believe this. The flute, it's gone full circle. It has. We've got the flute. I think. As luck would have it, I actually know how to play a flute. <laughs> Not very well, but I'm sure the uh, Mojal won't mind. This is fate. This is fate, chats. It was meant to be. I didn't remember that there was a, a music merchant and I didn't remember the flute. I did remember the bird, didn't remember the flute. And that's not why I came up with the flute sub goal at all, actually. Hello. Uh -huh. Bye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, I get it. Do I need to... I probably need to give him the, the list first, right? <laughs> Let's give him the list. I'm ready to play some music if you're ready to sign. Aye, go on, but don't stop until I'm done signing, or the Mojo will surely wreak vengeance on us both. <laughs> done. Here you go. And don't ever ask me to sign anything ever again. I can pretty much guarantee you that. What even is this game? It's an adventure point and click from 1999. It's my favourite childhood game. <laughs> 1800s, yes. I'm ready for my impressed. next job, sir. Yes, yes, good, good. Uh, did you get the captain's signature? 
Yes. Hand me the delivery list so that I can see for myself. You know, you remind me of somebody I know. A real Scrooge. Good. Uh, what's a Scrooge? Maps. Maps. New revisions. Lifesavers. Maps. Right. Your next assignment is a map of Shangagriel to the Rolling Man. Hold on. Did you not ask me about him earlier today? I did. Um. No, no. No, no <laughs> that wasn't me. That was somebody else. I could have sworn. Well, no matter. Uh, do you know how to get to the Rolling Man's house? No. Uh, let me explain then. Now, pay attention because this is complicated. He has chosen to live in the most inaccessible place in the city, but I guess he has his reasons. First, you head west off the marketplace on Oak until you get to a tiny little apothecary, Mrs. Cassop's Herbs and Oils, where you turn north on South Street. Confusing that. For about four minutes of brisk walking. What? <laughs> That's when you see a, a large grove of trees. It's a memorial to those who died in the last war with the tyrant back uh, the balance knows when. Can't see why they choose to remind us of that, where you'll turn left. That's west? No, left. That'll take you back south, but onto North Street instead. And that keeps you out of the Dalmari neighborhood. Down that way, nasty, nasty neighborhoods. Keep walking south or about, or was that north? Wait, wait, north on South Street, south on North Street, or the other way around. Anyway, find the uh. Rose Bridge off uh, I Reed Avenue and cross it. Right. There's a river? No, just a bridge. The river disappeared 500 years ago. No one knows what happened to it. After you've crossed the bridge, you'll be on the western slopes of Mercuria. And that's where West House <laughs> I mean, the Rolling Man lives. No, far from it, but you need to pass <laughs> through that part of Mercuria to get to the Rolling Man. Keep Are you south kidding me? and watch out for the livestock. They're likely to attack in that part of town. Eventually, you'll get to a large circular square. That's where they used to hold executions back when the city was civilized. Oh, lovely. You call murder civilized? Better than locking people up for years, as any level-headed person would tell you. Our freedom cannot be curtailed. Real men choose the honor of death to the shame of incarceration. That's one yeah, sure way you to do. look at it. Circle around the square and head down Tandak for half a mile. Or should that be Parrick Lane? Yes, Parrick Lane. Head west on Parrick Lane for uh, half a mile. Then turn right at the Maiden's Honor Tavern. North again? Uh, no, west. Uh, Parrick Lane has a few twists and turns. Anyway, you should now be able to see the Ivory Tower. Is it a big tower? No, only about five feet tall. <laughs> but it's ivory, straight from the coast of the Southlands, bravely cut from the drooling jaws of the gruesome Kanda. Big creature, four legs, large ears, long snout, sort of grayish in color? Yes, the horror of the Southlands. Many a brave hunter has fallen victim to its ravaging hunger. Good grief. Okay, then what? Pass by the tower to the edge of the cliff and look down. The rolling man has built his home on the cliffside. It's a wonder he's not been washed away by the storms. I hope I got all that. Basically, go west until I hit the edge, right? Uh, yes, that would be correct. Thankfully, it's on the map. Oh, that was easy. <laughs> that was easy. Is that him? Nice place. Nice little place, I'm not gonna lie. Not gonna lie, that's, that's a great location. Uh oh It's a brown, slightly cloudy liquor. I can't hold my liquor. <laughs> I'll be spending the rest of the day doubled over, staring into the ocean, and, uh, I'll just not have any. Hello, Mr. Westhouse? Damn, Mason, what is it now? Oh, oh. <clears throat> Guess you're not, uh, you're not calling on behalf of that son of a bitch Sanya for him. Sorry, I don't know who- No, no, that's very unlikely. From what I hear, he doesn't much enjoy the company of women. Well, who in damnation are you? April Ryan, sir. Ryan? <laughs> Doesn't sound very Northlandian. 
That's Are you nice by hat. any chance from the coast of... You hold on. Ryan? April Ryan? <laughs> I'll be damned. You're from Stark. Apparently. Until today, I thought I was just from Earth. I had no idea there were two of them. <laughs> Takes you by surprise, doesn't it? Well, goddamn. Sit down, Miss Ryan. Let me get you a drink. He is living his best life. Um, I do envy his house a bit. That's a nice little location. The liquor over here stinks to high heaven. <laughs> Magic pollutes the purity of the spirit, but I keep a bottle of Glenfiddich for special occasions. Thanks for the offer, sir, but I didn't come here to have a drink. Really? I see. This isn't a <laughs> social call. No, sorry. Oh, no matter. It's still a pleasant surprise to meet someone from home. <laughs> now, <clears throat> what may I do for you? I have a delivery for you. Cortes told me to look you up. Jez told me to look you up. He did, did he? I see. <clears throat> Who's Cortez? What do you mean? You don't know him? I think not. I'd certainly remember. Did, did you say Cortez? You, you wouldn't be talking about old Manny Chavez, would you? Hmm? Well, he ought to be dead by now, but then by all rights. Uh, so should I. I don't know his first name, but he calls himself Cortez. Tall fellow, mysterious and elusive, rarely answers a question with a simple yes or no. Smokes like a chimney? Aside from that bit about smoking like a chimney, it sounds exactly like Cortez. Manny. I'll be damned. That old crook is still around. Well, how the devil is he? He's good. Where do you know him from? Oh, my old life back in Stark. We had some exciting adventures, him and I. Actually, he's part of the reason I ended up here. I last saw him in the winter of 1934. So that was... But that's almost 300, 300 years, years ago. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? How old are And I'm they? sure he doesn't look a day older than he did back then. The handsome devil. Well, if I'm going to accept magic in parallel worlds, I might as well accept people living 300 years. Oh, no, you misunderstand. <clears throat> I'm only 46. I arrived here about 15 years ago, but I, I left Stark in 1934. Between the worlds where you dream, time has little meaning. I was trapped, you see, for, for quite a while. <laughs> what? For 300 years? <laughs> Time went by pretty fast. It didn't seem so bad at the time, but now that you mention 300 years, quite disconcerting, really. Quite you think? disconcerting. Right. Um, how did you end up here in Mercuria? <laughs> That's quite a story. I like him. I won't bore you with the details, but suffice it to say, I was always somewhat of an adventurer. The promise of virgin territory untouched by civilization held great sway with me in my youth as did the idea of a highly spiritual state of mind the occult magic karma i was born in 1902 in boston by the time i was 17 i'd put that life that's behind. not a boston accent i is spent it? the next three years at sea and then i wandered around europe for a time in the early 30s, the 1930s, of course, I found myself in India working as a journalist. That's where I met Manny, and that's where I first heard mm. of Arcadia. I was amazed and quite skeptical at first, but the thought of a whole new world to see and magic? <laughs> I was a fool, of course, but who knew where my curiosity would bring me? So what happened in India? I've tried to forget about it, to be honest. If I could go back and convince myself not to... Oh, but I still wouldn't have listened, of course. The unknown attracts. I ended up in Tibet in the winter of 34, wading through snow up to my chest, thinking for sure that this was it, and I was going to die. Manny pulled me out of that one, thank God. I spent three months in a monastery before pushing on into the void. There's only one way for a non-shifter to pass through the divide, and it's not an easy road to take. Now, if you don't mind, 
I'd prefer not to talk about the past anymore. There's more than enough to worry about in the present. Cortez said to look you up when I wanted to go back home, to Stark. Now, why would he say that? I'm not a shifter, and I, I don't know any magic. I'm sorry, Miss Ryan, but you'd be better off asking the Sentinel priests for assistance. Already did. They said I was on my own, that they couldn't help me. Bloody typical, those... Reactionary fools wouldn't extend a hand to help a drowning man if it violated the principles of their bloody balance. But I can't think why Manny would tell you to visit me in order to shift home. It just doesn't make sense. I have a delivery for you. A delivery? When did the U.S. Postal Service start delivering mail to Arcadia? It's from the map merchant at the market. It's just a map. Oh, good. I've been waiting for you. Not the American mm, using bloody. <laughs> What are you doing working for the guild? That's it. Are you planning He's on been staying living, in Arcadia? Um, I'd strongly advise against it, Miss Ryan. He's been Arcadia living abroad may look like a for 15 years. Fairy tale realm, but it's not. You bleed as easily here as you do in Stark, and magic can do more damage than a gun. I'm not I planning I on about staying, but I had to fight. find you. The map merchant was the only one who knew where you lived, and he wouldn't tell me. So I got him to hire me, and you were the second delivery on my list. Dear gods. Carrick and his misguided loyalty. I'll have a word with the man. Thanks for the map, though. I collect them. There's not much else I forgot to about do about the candle. godforsaken city. I should get going. Very well. well You're welcome you back at any time, very helpful. Anytime. Thank you, sir. I'll remember that. Hello, Mr. Westhouse. <laughs> Back again so soon, Miss Ryan? Yes. I don't have anything to tell you, really. I should get going. Exactly. All right. Anyway, did you sign the thing? You didn't, did you? Sign this, please. It's just to confirm that I made the delivery. Certainly. One map of the Sea of Songs to Captain Horatian. Nebuve of the White Dragon, a map of Changa Griel, the West Land, to the Rolling Man. What was that? Oh, we didn't do that yet. Okay, well, he did sign. That'd be just rude. Why? <laughs> get that, in. That'd be just rude. We can't get in? Maybe we can drink no, then? No, I can't hold down strong liquor. Well, I guess we have to go then. Hold on one second, Miss Ryan. I just remembered something. I swear to God. It's such a long time ago, I'd almost forgotten, but Manny did give me something that might be of interest. Now you remember. What is it? It's a pocket watch. Manny gave it to me the last time I saw him. I never quite understood why, but maybe you can tell me. Did he say anything about it? He said that when his heart started beating again, he would know. It would be like a message in Morse code, a beacon. Damn watch never worked, and the winding mechanism is broken, so it's probably not worth much. You're welcome to it, if it's any help. Thanks. It's an antique pocket watch. It's not ticking. The knob used for winding the watch seems to have broken off, and there's only a tiny hole left. Cor Cortez said something about Mr. Westhouse being the key to shifting back. Maybe... maybe there's something magical about the watch he gave me. What am I supposed to do with it, then? Oh. Pin. If I insert this pin carefully into the hole, Forgot about like it. Like so, and then slowly wind it. It worked! It's ticking! Oh, right. Did it! It's a shift! I can go home! What about the maps? By God, it's a shift. I haven't seen one for ages. What about the maps? Why don't you come back with me, Mr. Westhouse? You could say hello to your old friend, Manny. If I tried to step through that, Miss Ryan, I would suffer a most unpleasant experience. 
and I would be lost in the between forever. Besides, I built this house with my own two hands. That's impressive. I wouldn't want to leave it. And what does your How Stark you? have to offer me? This world is more recognizable to me now. Now you go ahead, Miss Ryan, and go back. And don't let your curiosity of the unknown tempt you into making another shift. Thanks for your help. Say hello to Manny for me. Tell him... Tell him I'm doing all right. And then I said... Thanks. It didn't sound very convincing, but... We're back! Cortez. Oh, God, it's real. It's all true. I saw We're it. Back. I saw the, the other back. world. Arcadia. Either I'm going crazy, or you were right about everything. Hey, let's hope for the latter, eh, mi amiga? <laughs> Cortez turned so into Slenderman. Success? success? My whole world has been turned topsy-turvy, so I don't think success is the right word. Nothing about it makes sense. Fact is, I don't believe in magic. The sun does not need you to believe in it to rise in the morning, senorita. You have seen Touché. the truth with your own two Touché. eyes. I can do nothing more to convince you. It is up to you now. Well? Do I have a choice? I have to believe at least some of it. My life wouldn't make much sense otherwise. You are a true skeptic, April. Está bien. We need your kind to balance the hopeless romantics like myself. <laughs> okay, all right. Hey, baby. What happens now? The Maelstrom told you about the balance. About Stark and Arcadia. A man named Tobias? He was called the Vestrum, I, I think. Vestrum Tobias. Ah, so Tobias made Vestrum give Yang good. I knew he would go far when I first met him years ago. He was just an instrument then, a student of the balance. But he was smart and resourceful. So you know what is going on with the balance. Tobias told me that the... Guardian? That the Guardian was missing and that the balance was failing. He said this would bring chaos into both worlds. As we are already seeing, your dreams, your nightmares, they are part of this. You sense chaos more keenly than most, but even they are beginning to notice that things are not as they should be. Like last night. What about last night? What you saw. You were not alone this time. There were others. And they saw the same thing. Not nightmares anymore. Real. The first sign of the damage chaos can do, the divide is being breached. It is not yet time for the worlds to be united. A breach could prove catastrophical. Who are you really, Cortez? Excuse me? People knew you over there in Arcadia. Tobias. He didn't know you by your real name, but he did know you. And Mr. Westhouse, he knew you too, as Chavez, but several hundred years ago. So my secrets are being revealed, are they? How old are you? I wouldn't Cortez? say that, because you're still a mystery to me. More so. Good. You see, senorita, mystery is important. To know everything, to know the whole truth is dull. There is no magic in that. Magic is not knowing. Magic is, is wondering about what and, and how and where. I'd settle for the truth, just to be able to know you. Because, uh, honestly, I don't mean this in a bad way. You scare me, Cortez. I'm afraid of you. And you are not the only one, mi amiga. I'm sorry, but whatever it is about me that mystifies you, it will have to stay a secret. There are... There are things even you should not know. Gee, thanks. That really helped. Perdóname. Perhaps later, when we are certain of what the future holds, okay? I think I can promise you that, Senorita Ryan. Later. But for now, we must speak of more important matters. You helped me back, didn't you? To shift? See? Si. 
The power is yours, yes? But for now, you need me to focus your powers to call forth your dreams. Dreams? Yes. To travel from one world to the next, you must pass through the world of dreams. It is the only way. You are capable of opening a shift on your own, but you might not be able to. What do you mean? The power. The magic is within you. And when you sleep, sometimes you open the portal without even being aware of it. But when you're awake, it's more difficult. With practice, you will do it. I don't think I want to do it. You must. The worlds depend on it. So what do I do? We must work together, April. I can't do it alone, and neither can you. But what exactly is it that we have to do? Four things. We must find the Lost Guardian, we must locate the gateway to his realm, and the disk that is the key to his tower, and we must do what we can to curtail and defeat the Vanguard. Oh. Just, just, just this. <laughs> How are we going to find the Guardian? The moment he surrendered his throne and left his realm, he stepped back into our world. This world, Stark. This is where he was born, and so this is where he must return to. But he could be anywhere, right? This city has power, April. Not magic, but the opposite of magic. And it draws people to it like flies to an open fire. All the pieces of the puzzle come together here. You, me, the Vanguard, the Guardian. I can guarantee you that he's here. But where exactly, I do not know. I think maybe the Vanguard do. I think they may have him. If they have him, how are we going to get him back? And why do they need him? Why do we need him? He left his realm, but he's the last guardian. And only he can open the doorway back to his realm to let his successor through. The Vanguard knows this. But what they don't know, yet, is how to get there. Who'd know about the gateway to the Guardian's realm? That, I do not know. That knowledge wouldn't be here in Stark. You must go to Arcadia, study the books, talk with the Minstrom and others who might know, but not yet. First, we must finish our mission here. Where is the key to the Guardian's realm? In Arcadia. The key contains two parts. One is the disc itself, the other is the Four Jewels, the Eyes of the Dragons. That gives the disc the properties of the balance, and makes it complete. How do we defeat the Vanguard? The Vanguard are strong here, and growing stronger. Even in Arcadia, they are gaining a foothold. And with the Tyrant on a leash, the future looks quite bleak. How do you know so much about what's going on in Arcadia? Voices whisper in my ear, Senorita. Voices that I trust. Okay. You're saying the Vanguard are strong here. Okay. How come I haven't heard about them? They don't go by that name here. Did you ever hear of the Church of Voltec? Sure. They're... Oh. That's the Vanguard? See. Si. Then they're big. Very big. But why do they... Why assume a different name here? In Arcadia, they flaunt their philosophy. They preach the destruction of the balance under the pretense of returning humankind to the glories of the past. Here, they cannot do that. So they have integrated themselves slowly but surely into society under the subterfuge of the New Age religion. And they've built a financial empire to match governments. They have that much money? The Vanguard own multinational companies. They own planets, April. They own armies. All they need is the balance, and they will own everything. The twin worlds will be at their mercy. So, we basically don't stand a chance, do we, against an enemy like that? If we hold at bay the forces of chaos, and if we ensure the natural continuation of the Guardian's role within the balance, then they will have lost. Where is the disc? The disc was left in the care of the Sentinel, 10,000 years ago. In the beginning, it was kept in the open, displayed for all to see. But not anymore. Not since thieves tried to make away with it. They will know where it is. Ask Tobias, Vestrom Tobias. Where are the four jewels? Ah, the eyes of the dragons. They are kept by the four dragons themselves, 
Two in Arcadia, and two in Stark. The White Dragon has one, as does the Old One. These you must find yourself. I'll help you with the others. How are we supposed to fight this chaos you keep talking about? You're the key, April. You have the power to shift, yes? But there's more to you than that. You are a child of the balance. And you... No. That will have to wait. By just being alive, you counter chaos. Without you, last night might have turned out much worse. That tiny breach might have been permanent. I didn't do anything. Then imagine the power you wield when you really do something. Trust me on this, Amiga. It's instinctive to you to fight chaos. You see it so clearly, and you will know what to do. You are most needed in Arcadia, where chaos is a part of reality. The tidal wave will hit there first, and unless it's subdued before it hits Stark full force, we'll never stand a chance. So you will have to travel to Arcadia after we are done here. Okay, so that's it? Kick some vanguard ass, find the Guardian, locate the entrance to his realm, and a 10,000-year-old disc and four dragon eye jewels? And oh, April, make sure you do battle with the physical manifestations of chaos along the way, because hey, that's your destiny. <laughs> it's impossible, Cortez. I can't do these things. I'm 18, I'm an artist. No, not even that, I'm nobody. You she's can't 18. place all these responsibilities on my shoulders. Of course I she's can't 18. carry that much. I will help you, April. Others too, you're not alone. Well, I feel very alone, and I can't even tell anybody about <laughs> she's this. She's by the wee Yeah, hi, how are you? I'm the chosen one. Can you help <laughs> me save the world from evil and chaos? There is no chosen one, April. There are only those who would and those who wouldn't. You have a choice between the two. You said I had powers. <laughs> that I wasn't so like slick. everybody Hold else. Up. True, but you still have a choice. Prophecies can never unravel the will of a single human. You are one of many possible paths, but unfortunately, most of the alternative paths have been blocked by circumstances beyond our control. The world does depend on you, but you have not been chosen. You choose for yourself what you are, and what you will be. Now what happens if I choose no new way? Then the choice will have to be, yes, let's save the world. What happens if I choose no, no way? I am not a fortune teller, nor am I a Venar. What will happen? Something else? That's all I can tell you. Something else. But I'm sure it won't be anything good. Not unless you agree to help. But I can't do it. I'm not who you think I am. I'm not your savior. I don't have any magic powers. I'm just this girl. I'm just me. The choice is yours, April. As always, the choice is yours. It's not much of a choice, is it? For what it's worth? Perhaps not. Still, you need to come to the decision on your own. Then the choice will have to be, yes, let's save the world. Where do we start? <laughs> Here in Newport. We must find out about the Vanguard. Their headquarters are in this city, but where? Do they have the Guardian under lock and key? What are their weaknesses? Once we've done that, you must travel to Arcadia. I cannot go there, and besides, I have things to take care of here. Right. Except, where the hell do I go to find out about the Vanguard? The library? The net? Valuable information is hard to find. Remember the painting I showed you yesterday? Yes. Sure. The artist. A boy named Warren. I told you about him, yes? Warren is involved in a lot of activities that, um, aren't exactly legal. He has connections. He can point us in the right direction. All right. Okay. Where do I find him? My friend, Father Raul at the Hope Street Cathedral. He's had some contact with the boy lately. Ask him. Wait. Did you say Hope Street? Yes. As in the most dangerous neighborhood in Newport? Is it? <laughs> I don't usually follow the civic affairs of the city. I remember Hope Street when they first built it. A clean neighborhood. That must have been a very long time ago. Still, I'm sure you'll be safe. You're a girl, no? A self-respecting gentleman would never harm a girl. It's the self-respecting gentleman part I'm concerned about. Still... I can handle myself. 
What I Baba take? Baba Raul, was it? At the Hope Street Cathedral? What I take? Yes. He will lead you in the right direction. Help you find Did he just imply she should be safe because she's a girl? Tomorrow, <laughs> we will meet up at the cathedral late in the afternoon. All right. I need to speak with Raul as well. Okay, good. It's a plan then? Enjoy yourself tonight, April. Who knows what the future may hold? Good night. All right then. All right then. Let's, um... Let's go to bed, I don't know. Okay, let's go for a little walk. Let's see if there's anyone at the cafe. I should probably go to sleep, like, both in game and in real life. Hi, Charlie. Pulling long hours today, Charlie? Unfortunately, um, yeah. Are you staying for the show tonight? What show? You don't know who's playing? No. I've had a few other things on my mind these past few days, Charlie. Sorry. Anybody good? Anybody good? Are you kidding? Roy and Dale's playing. It's the first gig on their new tour. Sort of returning to their roots before they do the big venues. Tonight? Great, that's perfect. Especially tonight. I need some serious unwinding. Yeah? What's up? Nothing, I'm just tired. I just had the weirdest experience of my life. You wouldn't believe me anyway. You wouldn't believe me anyway. Try me. No, really. You would not believe it. I'm not sure if I believe it. Actually, I'm pretty sure I don't, but... It's too close right now. I gotta think it through first. Alright. When you're ready to tell me, okay? Maybe. If I tell anybody, you'll be the first, Charlie. When does the concert start? In less than an hour. I expect the place to be crowded soon. So you should find yourself a spot to sit down. Is Emma around? Haven't seen her. But she knows about the show, so she'll be here. Thanks, Charlie. No problem. That's a nice place. Lovely way to sit down. There's Emma. All day. You didn't show up at school, you weren't at work, and then Fiona tells me you're out looking for Cortez again. And on top of that, Zach brags about bagging a date with you. What's up with that? Ew. Oh, shit. Zach, I totally forgot. Ew. He's gonna kill me. If I don't show up, that is. We're not going you on a date. You mean it's true? You have a date with that asshole? <laughs> I promise to say promise I have to go. What are we doing, chat? I... Why did we want to go on a date with, with that prick again? There was some reasoning behind it, but I don't remember. Listen, there is a gig. I'm not going on a date with a person that I don't even like. I'm gonna stay. You're right. I'm staying here. Good girl. Now, there are a couple guys you should keep an eye open for tonight. Me? I have a boyfriend. You need a boyfriend. You need a boyfriend because I have one and I need somebody to compare boyfriends with. It's not your choice to make, girl. It's just the natural order of things. I thought we were here to listen to the band. Sure. From the back. So we can scope out guys' asses. I don't know which place is weirder. Mercuria or the Fringe Cafe on any given night. <sighs> Mark what? Never mind. So, okay, which guys are we looking for? So that's Emma. <laughs> right. Now, you may want to take notes. So that's Emma. There we go. Another chapter down. Friends and enemies. Oh, hey. I didn't really have that much to drink, did I? <laughs> but I did travel through a shift into a parallel universe, which would explain this weird compulsion to curl up into a fetal position and go back to sleep. Not yeah, that I'm I particularly do looking that. forward to it, on the regular but I guess basis. I have to go find that Warren guy Cortez told me about down on Hope Street. And hey, like that's not enough. I have to avoid bumping into Zack today. That's gonna be awkward. He's probably royally pissed that I stood him up, and Zack's very good at being pissed. That's gonna be awkward. But it's always awkward with Zack. So it's alright, chat. That's alright. Going to save the game and go to sleep because I didn't mean to stream for five hours. If anything, I taught myself that four hours today is tops. Four hours is tops, but three would be optimal. And here we are. Is anyone surprised? Is anyone surprised?